kids killing kids, people dying for nothing, and it really hurts me. You know, it grieves me because, like, there's so much evil in this world now. There's so much hatred, so much anger, and they're just killing one another for nothing, for a color. Anyway, so what happened was we just wound up fighting. Um, the two friends, the two homeboys that I had, they left me there and they just took off running while I stood there fighting with these guys. I wound up laying on the ground. I was stabbed 18 times. Um, they uh, collapsed my lungs, you know, they punctured my lungs. Um, I was stabbed seven times in the head, six times in the back, you know, all in the face, well, twice in my face, uh, my arms. I was just like, I, I was just left like that, you know, and I couldn't do anything about it. He ends up um, hanging me out the 18th story by my ankles um, and uh, pulled me back in and said, get undressed and get on the bed and I'll let you live. And I sat on the bed, was shaking, and uh, I don't know how he pulled me, first of all, I don't know how he pulled me back in because I felt my legs slipping through his fingers. From then on, bullets started coming at the car and coming right and left from uh, all around me. And the miracle was that all the bullets were coming at me, but everyone around me was being killed except me. And the one on my right was one of my best friends, and. He died instantly in the car. I remember saying to myself, I was riding down the street about three days before I got arrested. And I thought to myself, I remember saying, you know what, I got it all, this is perfect. And, and I realize now that it must not have been perfect because three days later, I was looking at 27 years going to prison. I started using speed and it at first, it was just like a weekend thing, you know, weekends, you know, just get high. And then before I knew it, it was like an everyday thing. I had to have it. I, I wouldn't get out of bed. I wouldn't do nothing unless I had it. You know, it was, it became, I became addicted and um, um, it was ugly. I don't do it. It's stupid. I mean, what, what you going to get out of it is just a quick high. And when you, you're just going to have more problems for yourself. You're going to get addicted. I mean, you're going to smoke weed. It's going to lead to cocaine, shooting needles. I mean, it's stupid. You don't need that. Well, after the drug comes down, you feel, it makes you feel ugly. It's like, man, it makes you feel so down, so low, that you just, it's not worth living for. You're just so tired of it. And it's not. It made me feel like that at a point where I just wanted to end my life. After those, that high is gone, your problems are still there. You, those, those won't change your problems. I tried it, and I, I could do anything. I felt like I could do anything. I could clean the house, be a mom, you know, do all the errands, and still lose weight. And, and but it wasn't like that at all, for real. You turn around, and um, I lost a year of my son's life. I don't, I don't know what happened in that year. Uh, I remember waking up, I had lost so much weight, I was down to 93 pounds, and I waking up, and I was bruised from head to toe because of the sheets. The weight of the sheets and turning around in bed, I was completely bruised. My last roommate from when I was using, he's um, doing a 10-year stretch in Folsom for dealing. He got caught, and um, a couple friends just OD'd. One of my friends was shot, actually shot by the police. He got raided and stepped out of his house and made a wrong move, and they they shot him. What I put my my family through, I could never, um, I could never imagine me being put through that by my children. I talked through a telephone and a piece of glass. And it's like that's my dad, and I ain't gonna hurt him, but. I'm still placed in a maximum security facility because I'm charged with armed robberies. So I got no choice but to deal with it. I ain't, haven't hugged my dad in 11 months. <laughs>